Any more information on how CC bounced back? Um, he's out there stretching today now and, and, you know, we'll play catch and everything. Just talking to him when he came in and said he felt good. So, um, you know, so far, uh, encouraging. What do you need to hear from him? What do you need to see from him for him to be on that roster for the ALCS? Um, you know, I think completing the bounce back today and, you know, that he is sound, um, you know, kind of more, we'll have some more conversations about it and, and try and make a, a good decision one way or the other uh, here over the next, you know, 24 hours. And with Hicks, is, is it just a matter of being healthy or is it a matter of you thinking he can be effective as well based on the amount of time that, that he's Yeah, it's a combo of both of those and, and coupled with, you know, our roster and, um, you know, it'll be, <clears throat> you know, the good thing is that he's put himself in this p position to, to um you know, make it a decision. Obviously, as 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 good a player as he is, you know, that's exciting. Um, so we'll have some tough decisions here over the next, you know, twenty four hours as we work this out. And what what kind of makes the most sense, and uh, we'll try and make a sound one. But he's put himself in that conversation. Kenny and Eric. Aaron is starting Hicks, say in, in game one on the uh, on the list of options. Could be, yeah. I mean, I would say, yeah, I, I, I would say he could potentially, you know, be a be a starter, be off the bench, not be on. I, I mean, I think they're all legitimately things we got to consider and, and what makes the most sense for us. So we'll we'll try and make as good an evaluation as we can. Is part of that consideration that if it ain't broke, don't fix it idea, just how good uh, Guardy is looked in center, how good the stands at bats and, and, and just all that? Yeah, I mean, that's that certainly complicates it a little bit. Because we've we've been, you know, very successful, and 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 the guys that we have um, are playing really well. So that certainly complicates it, and and kind of the unknown. Because you know, Aaron, you know, he hasn't played in games or anything like that, and it's been a while. So uh, the good thing is that he is healthy and put himself in that um, conversation. Eric, the decisions with CC and with Hicks and any other final decision for the roster how much will that be impacted by what happens in tonight's game um it'll it'll could factor in a little bit definitely um there could be a decision um based on the opponent for a spot or two um you know we're talking about a handful of guys for you know the final couple spots and and uh you know i think opponent will come into play a little bit uh meredith do you have a question Brian, over here to the left. Aaron, we've seen you be more aggressive this year with your bullpen. How much of that is a response to any criticism you got last year about sticking with starters too long? Um, I mean, I'm I, I kind of go into the game and go into series and you know what, you know, try and have a a, a blueprint or a plan in place that obviously is always fluid and you got to make adjustments on the fly, but um, just trying to do whatever to, to what's going to give us the best chance to win. So I don't know if it's a response to anything or just trying to be as pr prepared as I can be to, to make sound decisions and th that's ongoing. What did you make of that last year? Make of what? When people thought that you stuck with second oh, path here right. and Severino too long. It's, you know, I always, talk about baseball that um a lot of decisions are gray and you know sometimes you you make a decision and it works out and it not necessarily the right one but usually decisions made and certainly in the postseason are are always up for debate um and that's part of it and you, you kind of know that going in and um all you can do is is be as prepared and as focused as you can be to try and try and make sound decisions to help us win and so i don't it's all part of it you've used dj at first base would you feel comfortable using encarnacion there or in your mind is he your dh for the postseason no i I'd, I'd, I'd be comfortable with edwin at first um uh, feel like he's healthy and sound. Feel like he plays a pretty good first base. So yeah, that that's I, I would always be comfortable going that way if there was uh, the right situation. 
Sweeney, pass it behind you to Marley when you're done. Um, you've been asked a lot of questions in the last two weeks about how you have changed or what you've done better. How much are there tangible ways that your team is better than the one you took over? Um, I'd like to think we're, that we are better, that we're a, a year more mature in a lot of ways from some of our key guys. Um, I've always, from from day one that I got to spend with these guys in spring training and really starting to get them, get to know them last year, um, I've always felt from a makeup standpoint we we're really strong and really good. Um, you know, that said, I, I, I think there's another level of – of experience, of um, focus, and and perhaps the biggest thing, hunger. You know, it's one word I've used to describe these guys a lot this year. Um, I feel like they're really hungry, and uh, you know they've they've shown that in the most normal of days during the year, and uh, continue to show it now when these when the stakes are really high, obviously. But I think that hunger is something this this team has in, in a big-time way. Aaron, can you learn anything from watching other managers work in the postseason, or does it have to be a personal experience? Um, I think you probably learn. You know, I watch a lot of baseball throughout the year, um, try and pay attention a little bit to what's going on. I'm certainly in the playoffs watching these games, um, you know, sometimes you you sit down, and you watch the whole game. Sometimes you're in and out a little bit, but you know, hopefully, you know, you're kind of always growing from your experiences, and and that's not always just as a player or as a manager or in your own game. I think there's always things to be to be learned, and you know, um, you know, I've been in this game my entire life pretty much, and I think all the experiences you have going back to childhood and being around things um hopefully you you take with you and you learn from and you grow from and 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 adds to your level of experience behind marley Aaron, defensively compared to last year's club do you feel like you've improved overall and are there any specific players that have taken strides in that area that you've noticed i do i think you know i think game three was um you know big reason we won that game was our defense and uh you know, you look around the diamond, I think Glaber's made huge strides this year defensively. Um, you know, right now with the lineup we're running out there where you have DJ, a, a middle infielder, basically playing first base. Um, you know, obviously a lot of talk about what Geo's meant to our club and how good he's been defensively. Um, I think our outfield's played incredibly well. As good an outfielder as Aaron Judge is, I think he's gotten better this year. I think he's had an amazing defensive year. Gardy's been terrific in center. Um, you know, John Carlo coming back from the knee injury, I think, has been sound in left field and then have the ability to go to Cam. I feel like, um, you know, we're strong in a lot of ways. Gary, I feel like, continued to make, make big strides defensively. Didi, and as steady as he is. So, I feel very confident in our defense. Feel like um, it played a role in us um, having a successful first series. Just right. a quick, quick follow up to that one. Uh, defensive metrics have gotten better. Uh, they're still not great, but mm -hmm. do you think that that's one area of the game where the eye test is still just as important as it always was, or can you quantify it a little bit better with numbers as opposed to in the past? Right. Yeah, I think you can quantify better. Um, you know the. The eye test is still important. Context is still important. Um, and those are things you hopefully are always considering when uh, when making evaluations or determinations. So, um, you know, we try and look at all those things. And um, but, but overall, defensively, um, I feel like we are a better club. Rustin. Aaron, it, uh, it seems like young players are having more impact all over the game. And then on the other end of the spectrum, you have somebody like Brett Gardner playing the best baseball maybe of his career at his age. Just wondering, what have you kind of learned about Gardy just being cl up close with him for two years uh, as opposed to watching him from afar? Um, really tough. Um, you know, he's a hard-nosed, blue-collar, old-school, grinded-out player um, that, <clears throat> you know, just despite being what, 36 is that what he is i mean you look at him he's you know he's physically very sound very fit 
um, obviously still runs well and is strong and, you know, takes care of his body and has shown to be durable. Um, so, you know, even though he's been through a, the rigors and, um, you know, gotten beat up in different ways like everyone does that plays every day, um, you know, I feel like he's got a younger man's body and, and part of that's a gift, you know, he's physically, a, you know, he's a stud. Uh, over to the left, Anthony and Dave. Aaron, what do you think of the championship belt thing that the players are doing after wins? And is it true as reported that you got one after the, uh, on the Savages? <laughs> I, w I love the belt. Uh, it's been, it's been a, uh, team building thing for us. Um, it's, in a way it's created some competition, you know, guys want to fight for it, want to perform for it. Um, it's fun to see teammates talk through it and have to give it out. Um, so I think it's been something that, especially in the course of a long season, is is something that um, adds to the camaraderie of things and even the competition of things. I got one once. I don't know. Dave. Aaron, how uh, – over here in the set. How, how difficult is it in this kind of day and age and – I think last night Dave Roberts was talking about having faith and, and trusting in players and a bet to balance that with what your game strategy says and what the numbers say and, and what your plan is going into the game. You know, you have a loyalty to these players, obviously, but at the same time, you have to try to do it as surgically maybe as possible. Is that a hard line to walk? or do you That's part of the job. That's a big part of the job. So, um, I mean... Yeah, that's, you know, you know, you love your players and, and you're in it with them and you're, you know, I try and be as, you know, I think I'm as loyal as, as it comes, but, um, you know, I think, and I think when you have, when you communicate with, with people and, and have a relationship with people, it makes difficult decisions. I don't know about any easier, but it makes them. Um, you know, I think may maybe everyone understands it and at least respects it. And, um, you know, hopefully we have that with, with this group and, and I believe we do. Randy and Joe, we'll take a few more. Can you talk about the, the challenge that you guys would face if it's Houston that you play? And then also if it's Tampa, who, if they win it, they would have beaten the three big three pitchers uh, in a row. Yeah. Um, I think both teams are great and present, uh, you know, serious, serious uh, trouble competition for us, and 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 I know we'll have to play really well to beat both teams, um, whoever it ends up being. Um, obviously, you know, with Tampa being in our division, we know them well. You know, we know what makes them successful. Um, you know, we know how difficult it can be when you go in there. And, and even though we had some success against them in the regular season this year, you always know how difficult it is and how well we had to play to, to have that success. Um, you know, obviously with Houston, you know, I think a lot of people would look at them as going into this postseason as kind of the odds on favorite, you know, really a complete team with, you know, elite starting pitching and a good bullpen and, you know, star players and, you know, the, we know they're a load. So uh, we're really excited, whoever it may end up being. Um, and we know we'll have our work cut out for us. But but I think our guys relish that opportunity. Aaron, uh, coming off a sweep where things are clicking offensively and defensively, as you mentioned, is there a desire to get back out there and play? And, and how do you deal with this layoff and anything you do to kind of stay sharp and make sure that momentum carries over? Yeah, I talked about this a little bit yesterday. Um, you know, as a player and even, you know, looking back in the last couple of years, that would always make me a little a little nervous, a little anxious. I, I completely have a different view with, with these guys of that. Um you know, part of the reason 
you know, we we wanted to win game three so bad, or I did anyway, was, man, I look forward to having a few days off for these guys because I think it really serves them well. It really benefits them. And I think they do a great job. Um, and I think in this day and age, it's it's easier to stay sharp just with facilities and, and things you're able to do, um, you know, whether it's high-speed machines and you know, breaking balls if you want to see that or, you know, going into the last series, we had some sim game situation where guys that wanted at bats could get at bats. Um, I, so I know these guys, our guys will use this as a opportunity to kind of recover a little bit, stay fresh. Um, and, and I know we'll come out and, and be focused and I feel like sharp when that bell rings. Tina. Aaron, you have such a unique roster, and of course it keeps changing depending on who's coming back and who you're going to select. But when you talk about that hunger, where do it, guys have won World Series before. Some are looking to – they have never been this far in the postseason. Where is that all coming from that it seems like it's so unified, this hunger that this team has? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think that's something that's internal with these guys. I think it's something that um, – our leadership does a really good job of kind of living and instilling and, you know, guys kind of get caught up and uh, swallowed up in the culture, I think. And, um, you know, I think there's always a fine line between, I think we got a lot of good guys in that room that, you know, you'd want to go to dinner with or hang out with, um, but also a healthy dose of an edge that they play with, um, that serves them well in the grind of a 162 game season, but also think here in the playoffs where, you know, there's so much riding on every pitch and, um, it, it's something I, I, I really think those guys have in them, which is, is important. We'll take Aaron, uh, just, uh, two more, Mike and Jack. And I guess before we go for planning purposes, Judge and Stanton will speak tomorrow, wherever we are uh, after the workout in the interview room. Uh, and then tonight, uh, we will send uh, out via email after the completion of Game 5 uh, media outlines for what we're going to do tomorrow as far as availability and workout times and stuff. Mike. Aaron, just uh, in terms of the lineup you know, that you guys have had, obviously you're going to be facing tough pitching regardless of what team you play. What, what kind of elements do you feel like uh, Encarnacion, LeMahieu, and Urshel have added to your lineup that maybe you didn't have uh, in 2018? Uh, I think, I think the, the strength in numbers that kind of completes our lineup and makes us long, um, you know, I think – because they're all tough outs, you know, in different kind of ways. Um, I think when you have nine guys that are tough outs that are giving tough quality at bats, um, I think that's something that's served them all well as a group. Um, and probably over the course of, of games, you know, eventually leads to some mistakes, uh, eventually leads to, you know, some innings where we've really broken through and it's not necessarily all just that inning where, you know, we threw up a crooked number or threw up a five or a six spot, you know, um, you know, that happens sometimes in the innings leading up to that in the, in the, in the toughness and the quality of at bats. And I feel like that's what they have maybe as their biggest strength is, um, the quality one through nine and, and how that can wear down an opponent. Last one, Jack. Aaron, I think we all understand that a rested bullpen is an asset, but you guys really seem to take that to a higher level with your big four in September. For instance, Chapman threw 70 pitches in the month of September. I can't imagine a healthy closer contending for a postseason spot was ever used that infrequently. Can you take us behind the curtain a little bit and describe, was there a voice or a series of voices or a meeting where someone said, or, hey, we want these guys to be ready for October. Let's, let's plot out the plan at the end of September in this manner. No, it actually just kind of unfolded that way a little bit in September. I mean, we were playing it straight, um, honestly. is you know, So there were games where you know, Chappie's situation that we're pretty disciplined on didn't present itself. So we ended up having to get him into a couple of games just because 
he hadn't pitched in a handful and we were going to, all right, he's in there today in some form or fashion. Um, you know, we stayed disciplined to, you know, picking a spot where we felt like a guy needed an extra day. We would do that. Um, but, but in most of those games where our, our guys were available, um, and we were going to bring them into their normal high leverage situation. Um, you know, obviously we stay away from during the regular season, the, the try to stay away from the three in a row and the, you know, more than three out of four and try and be mindful of that. But we didn't specifically get away from that at all in September. I think, I think the games just kind of went in that direction that we had some guys down more often because of the daily score of the game or the result of the game sometimes. 